do a quick video on the Land Rover again and show you what we've been doing. So we have got a coat of paint on the Land Rover, which is pretty fab. So I'll start at the back. The uh, inside, of course, is uh, that's uh, satin black, I think it is. And then if we go up to the hood, that's all Keswick Green. The Keswick Green in Paintman Paint. And just at the back here, you can see this is all, oops, did a trip there. Oh, my own blooming thingies. Uh, right, so Keswick Green on the back, including the rear cross members painted Keswick Green and the grab handles. Might have them back black, I'm not sure yet. But the old Land Rover signs on there, uh, they like to come in. And we've got on the side, we've got a nice straight Land Rover there. Nice straight lines. And down the side, we saved that door because it was all right, it was totally all right, there's nothing wrong with that. Painted the mirrors as well, they've only had one coat yet, and the roof's been done. That's had one coat, and the working light's on the back, that's got to be wired in yet. Coming down, we've done the wing. Uh, the side repeat is going to get changed for smoke ones. And then the front's been done, that's got paint on it, of course it's got the new bumper on. The old grill's gone back on for now, so I painted it, just to make it look pretty really. And I had some paint left over. Down the side, we've got nice straight lines down the side, look. I'll just come down here, we've got nice straight lines down the side. And I'm quite chuffed with this. Uh, it took about three days work. All rubbed down. And all in Keswick Green. So there we have a nice, lovely Keswick Green Land Rover. What I've done as well is I've taken the, the tow bar off the back, so I've got a clean look on the back. I'll go back here. So you can see it a bit better. So I've got a nice clean and straight look from the back. Looks all nice and oh, see if I can, there we go. That'll brighten that up a little bit. So it looks all clean at the back. Nice straight lines. And you can see underneath there, what I've done is I've taken the rust off the back axle and I've sprayed the back axle with chassis black just so um, people behind me will see a tidy truck. I've replaced the air breather on top of the axle just so, because if you don't replace that air breather, it's about there. Oh, I can't even point you to it on the phone, Burke. So it's about there, the air breather. If you don't replace that, I mean, the thing might have been on for 30 years. It blows the seals on the hubs if you don't, because the pressure builds up and that allows the, the air breather allows the pressure to release to atmosphere. And it's just a little, a nut and a plastic pipe or a banjo union and a plastic pipe. So that's all done at the back. <clears throat> We've got... So at the front, because that's all now Keswick Green, that's all pretty good. At the front, because we've got the white pack lights come in, they're North American style lights, LEDs. I've cleaned up the white walls on the tyres, so I've washed the tyres. They look quite new now. And funnily enough, my rear hub has stopped leaking. It was For those that followed an earlier video, that hub was leaking, even when it was sat still. So I thought the stub axle had gone, so I bought new stub axles, they weren't expensive, about 30 quid but the hub stopped leaking now, and I'm not sure if I drive it a bit, um, obviously I've not driven it for a while because it hasn't got any lights on it, but if I drive it a bit, I'm wondering if it, the leak comes back. If it does, then I'll change the stub axle. If it doesn't, I'll leave it as it is, obviously. Um, but that's pretty good. I did a video on the brakes yesterday, so the back are brand new. Uh, sorry, I did the job, I didn't actually do the video, I forgot to do the video. So I did the back, the back are brand new, pads, wheel bearings and seals, and the front, I've got brand new pads on, just slightly warm, but I mean, they're not, it won't replace them yet. Um, so they're all new. So I did the brakes and stuff as per the service manual. Uh, I think the discs were at, what the discs were at? 11.4 mil, I think. And the pads were at nine mil. So we've got plenty of pads, we've got plenty of pads on there. I sprayed the exhaust black. It's not heat resistant paint, so it might bubble off, but it doesn't get really hot. It's a diesel Land Rover, so it's just to make it uh, look in keeping with the vehicle. <clears throat> and then, so we're replacing the indicators. These are going to be smoke, little LED indicators. I haven't taken them off yet. They've not arrived yet. Number plate's going to get changed to a nice new one, because that's a bit of a, an old battered one. And I'm fairly chuffed with this bumper. Now we've got paint on, but I know it's a dent that just there. And I, oh, I'm annoyed at that, because I thought I had a straight bumper there, but never mind. I mean, it's pretty straight apart from that dent, considering it was all battered up and you know stood on and all sorts. So it's not a bad little bumper, that. 
So have you got any advice on putting signs on? I can either put Land Rover across there, or I can put the Defender badge back, uh, sorry, here, I'm in the wrong place there. I can put the Land Rover across there, or Defender, or I can put the original Defender badge on there, I'm not sure what to do yet. So if you've got, put it in the comments if, you, if you've got a preference, or what you think should happen, I don't know. I'm not sure what to do there. It didn't have Defender on when it came. I don't think from the factory in 89 they had Defender on here. I think they just had the little Defender sign there, so I think that came later, but you know, you can put it on, I suppose. So that's our Land Rover for today. Quite chuffed with that. It's three days' work getting the paint on, uh, but it's on now, so it needs another coat, and then, uh, then flattening and polishing. Another coat on the wing mirrors there, because I've done the wing mirrors in Keswick Green as well. And uh, took the door seals out. So we'll take this off. The door seals are all out, so um, we've got <coughs> massive gaps in the doors at the moment. So I've got new door seals in the garage, they can go on when the paint's dry. And uh, yeah, I think we're looking pretty good there, so uh, that'll end that video. I'll just go from the front and see it far away so you can see it. Just have a walk up here. And that's it from the front. All looking fine and dandy. Just to finish it off, just need the lights around the grill and lights really. Because um, she's MOT'd and stuff, she's on the road, so it, it'll drive. But I think we need a new diff um, on the front. That's because I've got, I've got uh, I don't know if, if you've experienced Land Rovers before, but if you get a, a, you know, a jolt when you take off or accelerate hard, that mean, usually means one of, one of three things. It's either the prop shaft splines, the stub axle, uh, uh, drive axle splines, or it's the diff. And... When I looked underneath here this morning, I had up on a, you know, on the axle stands, I uh, noticed that the prop's been off before and it's got new bolts on it. So I'm presuming to check the prop, it wasn't the prop, and therefore it must be the the splines on the stub axle, um, oh sorry, the, the drive shaft or the or the diff. So I'm hoping it's not the diff, but there is a lot of play on that play on that, prump, on that front shaft. So we'll check that out. I'll do a video on that so you can see it anyway, uh, maybe tomorrow. So anyway, that's me signing off.